Hello, friends. The moment we've all been waiting for, the first major of the golf season is here. It is the Masters. It's myself, Ian McMillan, Cody Williams. Uh, we're going to break down our best bets for the Masters this week. Uh, and because it's the Masters, because it's the major, we'll go a little bit deeper into it as well. We'll give you some prop bets uh, and maybe some other bets uh, that we like as well. Cody, how are you doing? Uh, doing well, man. You know, still can't hit a can't hit a bet to save my life, but uh, you know, excited for Masters Week. This is this is the week it all turns around. The sage did not work for you, but we were talking pre-show. Maybe you just needed a week to kind of soak in, because um, mm -hmm. your picks actually weren't weren't bad. Uh, they were all yeah. close, and then they all kind of collapsed for you on Sunday. So, you know, maybe the sage the first week and improve things, and now that it has like a full week to soak in, maybe 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 you're maybe you're about to get hot. I mean, who could say, you know, maybe maybe I'm about to, you know, sweep the board at the Masters and then just never lose a golf bet ever again. That would be why we, that's something that's never happened on Green on the Greens is to sweep the board, which is almost impossible. I would, I would guess mm -hmm. if you parlay those picks, it'd be pretty long odds, but <laughs> yeah. it has not happened before on Green on the Greens. Um, I don't really want to complain about our results at the at the Valero Texas Open last week, um, but I will. I always, so I always obviously bet my winner. I also sprinkle on my top five and top 10 guys with the thought, like if they win, I like, I want to at least get a little bit of win, uh, a little bit of cash from it. Uh, this past week, I did not sprinkle on my top 20 pick who was Akshay Batia, um, mm -hmm. who was what, like 60 to one. Was he 60 to one to win? Uh, 65 at one point during the week. He was, yeah, he was, in, he was in that to one to win. I mean, obviously a great top 20 bet. Um, and I, I mean, I guess I'll take the win, but it, I don't think I've experienced this before. It stings a little bit to actually like, it almost feels like a loss when you're watching. And like mm -hmm. I was, I was rooting against him in the playoff. Cause I was like, if he loses in the playoff, I'll actually be more happy. Cause I'll be like, I avoided heartbreak if I would have sprinkled on him. So um, yeah, my top 20 pick one. So I, all I got was a plus two twenty five win out of it. Once again, I will take it. I won't complain too much uh, as my cat's tail there is it's getting a little <laughs> screen time. Um, but yeah, that sucks. I should have sprinkled on him to win. That that would have been a nice hit. Um, I I was right about him. Um, and I was choosing mm -hmm. between him and Bazudnu. I was going to take one top ten, one top twenty. Uh, and if I would have taken Bati a top ten, I would have sprinkled on him to win outright, like I did with Bazudnu. So, um, a win's a win. But that it it stung a little bit on Sunday, to be honest. Oh, it definitely stings. Like that's, it's not a good feeling. You know, I, I, you know, gave you a little bit of hell on a uh, social media just because uh, I haven't hit a bet in a month yeah. plus now <laughs> at this point. And the last bet I actually hit was uh Will Zalatoris top 20 at the Genesis um, or one of my last bets that I hit was Will Zalatoris top 20 at the Genesis when he was also in contention to win. So I felt what you felt, what you feel right now, very keenly. Yeah. Um, uh, let's just go to the chat here really quick. Paul says, uh, boys, how are we getting data on live guys with no info on data golf? Also happy masters week. Happy masters week. My friend love always at chips picks daily. Uh, yeah, you can't really get, uh, data. They do have some live has some strokes gain data, but it's kind of sketchy data. Um, mm -hmm. so all I've really done is just basically look at where they're finishing in the, in these tournaments. Um, and I mean, most of these guys, uh, we're familiar from, uh from their pga tour career so so we kind of know what these golfers do well and what they don't do well for the most part um and then other than that sure there is certainly some level of mystery also i mean these guys are playing shotgun start three round events so there's a lot of mystery surrounding live guys but i i don't have any 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 secret to share with you in terms of handicapping these live guys yeah, I mean, Rick Run Good uploads some of the, like you said, the sketchy live data. I'm not yeah. like putting the most stock in the world in that, like finishing data and like what courses they finished well at and didn't also matters. Like last week in Miami, they played at Doral, formerly a PGA Tour venue. Like we've seen some big tournaments there. So like that's a big boy golf course. So like I'm putting a little bit of stock in what happened in Miami. Uh, that's kind of why like we're not going to, you know, to spoil my picks. Brooks Kepka is not in there, even though I've talked him up the past two weeks because he didn't play well last week. And that's, you know, it's kind of a red flag to me. Yeah. I bet uh, if you remember on the show, uh, Brooks Kepka a few weeks ago, 20 to one, because I thought that maybe he was going to play well in Miami and he, his odds were shortened, but he's actually gotten a little bit longer. I think he's at 22 to one at some places now. Uh, mm -hmm. So I have some futures that I, that I place that, that I'm pretty happy with heading into this week. Um, Brooks was not one of them though. Um, but that's, I mean, that's, Betting futures like Masters winners to weeks before the actual Masters is a gamble inside of a gamble because you're you know trying to predict what kind of form they're going to be in when when the week shows up and where the odds are going to move. Uh, Buffalo yeah. Dan says, "Let's go Xander." 
more <laughs> on that later. Uh, yeah, a couple picks for him as well. Connor's top 20, uh, English top 20, Xander and Hideki to win uh, are, are my bets so far. I have not, I'll actually talk about every all these other guys. Uh, I do not have Connors on my list right now, though. Connors is a guy I've bet on in the Masters before. Mm-hmm. He's always a good, you know, style fit. Um, I think now all I do is bet him as top Canadian because he's he's another guy that I just don't trust him. I trust him even less than I trust like the Xanders of the world um, to 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 win a bit a big dog event. So, um, but yeah, Connors always a good course fit. His ball striking has begun this year. His play around the greens has been bad this year, worse than years past, which gives me a bit of concern for for Corey Connors this week, but. Uh, I, I I don't argue against any Corey Connors picks. No, not at all. And I mean, like he's traditionally putted pretty well here, so like it's actually not yep. that big of an issue for me. Um, Harris English, I'm a little bit. I actually of those two top twenty plays, Harris English is the one I'm a little bit, a little bit more sour on. The ball striking just hasn't been that good. His short games remain really good. I mean, he's a great short game player, but his ball striking just hasn't really been there this year. Because I've I've been trying to keep an eye on him now that he's healthy. He came back from that back injury last year, and I like Harris English's game when he's you know, uh, peaking on approach play, which he really hasn't been doing. Yeah. Well, okay. More of that later then. Um, oh, <laughs> oh, my bad, my bad. Uh, Buffalo Dan also says Taylor Gooch to win. Yes. Uh, of course the winner will have an asterisk next to it because Taylor Gooch is not in the field. Um, who was it? Greg Norman. I th- what do you say about Taylor Gooch lately? He's the best iron player in the world right now. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, Taylor Gooch noted, uh, noted historian of golf who said that a live event was like similar to being like winning a Ryder cup. So right, like, yeah. yeah, we have to put all of our stock <laughs> in what Taylor Gooch says. Uh, other thing we didn't cover last week, uh, closer to the win. You got me there. Andrew Novak did not really finish well, but he did make the cut. That was good enough. Um, I got, I got too cute with Matt Kuchar. Um, I let my soft spot for Matt Kuchar get in the way. Um, and he did not make the cut. So, uh, it's now five to three. I have a five three lead on you in close to the win. Um, we'll see who our close to the win picks are this week. Um, any general betting tips that you want to talk to the people about when uh, going through Augusta National? I mean, obviously, it's the only major where it's the same course every single year. So if you've been betting on golf uh, like we have, you've probably heard the same things. There's nothing uh, groundbreaking this year, but Cody just want just want to give like a general outlook of betting on at Augusta. Uh, it's a ball strikers golf course. Like I, I preach ball striking constantly on this show and when I make my picks, but this, this place more than anything is a ball strikers golf course. T to green matters so much. And that includes the around the green play as well. Like you have to be solid around the green. You know, we talked, I mentioned Victor Hovland uh, multiple times throughout the course of this show. And the big thing with Victor Hovland has always been a short game has been a problematic. Well, last year it peaked and look at lo and behold, he was in contention at the masters. So like that kind of goes to show like you need the complete ball striking profile. And though putting is important, it's really just putting on fast greens. Like you don't want to like, you have to be able to lag putt at Augusta is the big thing. Cause there's so many, tears and undulations to these greens that like being able to leave your second putt close is the biggest crucial thing i'm not worried if you can make if you're like good from 20 feet away i don't care about that i care about are you going to have three feet on your second putt or are you going to have seven feet on your second putt and like that's why like someone like ludwig aberg who we've watched blow the blow by the hole a billion times on faster greens so far in his young career i'm a little bit worried about him in his first time at augusta yeah, and the Masters more than anything else. Uh, well, the thing I always like to talk about is is lefties have historically done well mm-hmm. uh, at the Masters. Uh, Phil yeah. Mickelson three times, Bubba Watson twice, and the only Canadian to ever win a major tournament, uh, Mike Weir, also a lefty. Um, because of a lot of dog legs right to lefts, easier hit a fade than a draw, so lefties who get to hit a fade on those holes have a little bit of an advantage. I think that advantage has been nullified a little bit with some of the holes being extended. Um, mm-hmm. Now the, the right-handers are just kind of aiming above the trees and hitting it over the trees on a lot of those holes, but it's still my favorite thing to bring up because I'm a lefty as well. So, um, and obviously a soft spot for Mike Weir. Uh, Masters also has a billion trends. I'm sure if you, you follow, you know, betting guys on Twitter, you see all these trends that, that get tweeted out. There's a lot of trends that line up when, you know, you want to try, you're trying to predict a winner. My favorite one, it was tweeted out by Ron Kloss at PJ splits 101, 12 of the last 12 winners. So 12 winners mm-hmm. in a row have gained at least, 18 total strokes T to green in the four events before their masters win. So this is, I mean, 12 in a row. So there, there's something substantial to that. Um, and there are 10 golfers right now on the PJ tour who would fall under that category. Scotty Scheffler, Hideki Matsuyama, Xander Shoffley, Shane Lowry, Corey Connors, Siwoo Kim, Roy McIlroy, Cameron Young, Ludwig, Ludwig Aberg, 
and the surprise one, Austin Eckro, um, mm. is on that list. If you toss in the live sketchy data, there's four names of live golfers who fall under that. Uh, Joaquin Neiman, John Rahm, Sergio Garcia, and Bryson DeChambeau has sneakily been playing some good golf uh, over at Live as well. So if this trend keeps up now, obviously no guarantee. This is just 12 of the past 12. And whenever someone says 12 of the past 12, you know what that means. The 13th <laughs> guy before that did not uh, follow this trend. So, right. Um, but I mean, 12 in a row. So, it, it you know, if you want to pay attention to any kind of trend, it's this one. And this narrows the list of golfers down uh, to a pretty uh, select group. And funny enough, I was actually going to bring up that exact tweet. So we we both like that one a lot. Twelve and twelve, it's hard to you know, it's hard to avert your eyes from that. Like it's not yeah. a like ten and twelve. I'm like, okay, that could be a little anomaly. Like, and you also like a lot of the uh, last five Masters data. I've really kind of just been like a little bit hesitant or not as heavily weighing as I normally would because the 2020 Masters skews yeah. so much of this data. Like yeah. it's the record setting score by uh, J Dustin Johnson at 20 yeah. under. And like there were, I think of the top 10 lowest scores ever for the tournament, three of them came in 2020. So yeah. like that data is just absolutely skewed to oblivion. Yeah. Cause obviously that was played in November. So Augusta golf courses play very differently depending on uh, the time of the year that you played in that. So uh, yeah, that's uh, worth noting as well. Um, I thought there was something else I was going to say, but I can't think of it now. Um, all right, let's get on the picks. Uh, we were supposed to have Brian Jeffer on, uh, VP of betting at Minimedia to be the third seat this week. Uh, he had some family stuff come up last minute, so he backed out. Uh, but his winner is actually uh, a winner that both Cody and I like. So that's just going to be squad ride for us. We'll, we'll give that out last. Um, and there's a very small chance he does pop in here at some point, but I, I, I don't think he's going to. So let's just get into our picks now. Um, most of those trend stuff, if you're watching the show, you've probably heard it a million times before for Augusta. So I think, I think we're just good to get in the pick. So let's, let's go top 20 Cody. Who do you got? Yeah. Going with the lefty, you know, you talked about lefties and I'm going with last week's winner, Akshay Batia, obviously debutante here making his first start at Augusta last win, uh, by a debutante was fuzzy Zeller in 1979. I don't want him yep. to win. I want him to finish in the top 20. And that's all I'm asking. And his profile fits pretty well. Obviously, you have the lefty with strong correlation to success, but his ball striking has just been unreal. Over the like combined over the past two tournaments, he's gained more than 21 strokes with his ball striking. He gained more than eight at Houston and then more than 12 last week at uh Valero. So absolutely crushing it with his ball striking. And it's the right trend line. Like every event over his last four, he's gotten better with his ball striking. Putter's been solid, not losing, not uh, gaining slightly in most tournaments. And the around the green play is fine. It's not anything special. It's not anything to be worried about. I think that with him being a lefty, with him being a debutante, we've seen debutantes have some success last year. So I hit the goal. It was T9 here last year in his first time playing the Masters. So I think that the debutante, we're just getting so much young talent into the game right now that the debutante trend, I'm still not going to pick a debutante to win, but I am more bullish to pick them for a finishing position. And I really like Akshay at plus 225 with the way he's hitting the ball right now. Yeah, obviously like the bet, great form. I uh, wish I bet him to win last week instead of just top 20. Uh, lefty, a lot of things to like. And yeah, I think that that narrative that like don't bet on a first, you know, a debutante to win the Masters, it almost feels like now my, my picks to win um, aren't debutantes, but it almost feels like one of those guys is going to win this year because it's almost become a trend that now gets repeated so much that yeah. it's going to break. And I mean, I think the closest, I think Will Zalatoris a few years ago, he finished second, right? I think he was, he was yeah. the closest. So it's not like debutantes are just always like, they don't even crack the top 30. Like there's been some guys who have flirted with winning uh, in their, in their first tournament at Augusta. So especially with, you know, the stacked uh, name of guys who are debutantes this time around, you got Akshay, you got um, uh, Wyndham Clark, you got Ludwig, like you, you got, you got some talent of guys who are, who are, you know, playing it for the first time this year. Wouldn't be shocked if one of those guys break that uh, breaks that trend this year and be a hell of a story if it's Akshay. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, back to going back to back and winning your first major or first masters, like that'd be incredible. Um, does the fact that he popped his shoulder out fist pumping on uh, the 72nd hole last week concern you? Apparently that's something that happens to him. I don't know if you've read that. There are but, some like, people that, yeah, like their shoulder pops out very easily. Yeah, I mean, if you if it pops out during a fist pump, I'm assuming that like it's probably a pretty common thing, and I'm not particularly worried about it because after he went and got it taped back up, he then stuck his wedge shot like within ten feet. So I'm not I'm not very concerned. 
Um, Buffalo Dan says, and he uses a jailbird. Um, I've seen people talk about the jailbird putter. What, what, what's, do you know what the story behind this is? Like what's, why, why, why is that significant? If I'm not mistaken, and I could be wrong on this, maybe Buffalo Dan can give me a little more insight, but I'm pretty sure it's the same putter that like Brian Harmon, Wyndham Clark, like all these guys who won majors last oh, year. Oh, got it. It's the it's this Odyssey Jailbird putter that they use, and so like it like it went on like the secondary, like they stopped making it, and oh. so the secondary market, like it went from like oh you know three hundred dollars for this putter to now it's like twelve hundred, fifteen hundred dollars to buy one of these. Yeah, cheapest one on eBay is right now is eight hundred bucks. Yeah. Uh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Cause I've seen people like tweet, like reference jailbird putters. And I, I, I didn't, I couldn't figure it. I was too lazy to look into it is, is the honest answer. But, um, yeah, I've seen more than, uh, he's he, the Buffalo Dan's not the first person I, I, I've seen say that about, uh, Akshay. Uh, my top 20 pet, I'm going to go a lefty as well. So we've got a couple lefties, uh, to finish in the top 20. I'm going to go Brian Harmon, um, plus 160, mm. relatively safe bet, not a long shot bet. Um, but this is a guy, obviously a lefty. His ball striking numbers have actually been pretty good. Um, I don't think he's going to win his second major, although could he be this generation's version of Zach Johnson? Possibly. That'd be kind of wild. Um, ha- didn't play great his past two uh, starts uh, with his ball striking, but last week specifically at the Valero Texas Open, he his putting was off the charts, uh, You know, which could be a huge help this week. We saw him finish T2 at the players, so he's, he's you know uh, competed in one of these uh, you know big dog events. And he did miss the cut the last few, the last couple of years of the Masters, but 2021 he did finish T12. So um, I don't know. Every single year I just have to bet on a lefty. Um, this year I guess the guy I'm doing it with is is Brian Harmon, top 20. We got a shortage of lefties. That's that's the big key. Like like it is. Are you gonna bet on Bubba Watson? Absolutely not. So <laughs> yeah, there are four lefties: Bubba, uh, Phil, uh, five lefties: Bubba, Phil, uh, Akshay, Brian Harmon, and Mike Weir. Not you're betting. not betting on Mike Weir. I can no. tell you that much. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I'll take Brian Har- uh, Harmon top twenty. I think I think he's outside of the miscut of Valspar. His his finishes have been consistent enough. I w- I'm not going to be spr- sprinkling on him to win. So watch him just go win again. Um, and I'm not going to get any more aggressive than him, than uh, betting on him outside of just top twenty. I don't even want to f- bet on him to finish top lefty because top lefty might be Akshay. So, uh, mm-hmm. but top twenty, I, I feel good about at that price. No, I, de- I definitely think that's the right price, especially, I mean, you know, going back to things to remember for the Masters, it's an 89-player field. Like, right. top 20, you're, he's basically got to finish in the top quarter of the field, and I think he's a top, you know, 20 player in the world right now. So, yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Yep, and don't forget, for any new uh, viewers, uh, the odds we cite are uh, ties are paid in full, um, which is usually we use DraftKings for that, but this week, I don't know if, uh, usually we use BetMGM for that. This week, DraftKings is offering a ties paid in full uh, market. I don't know if they're going to continue to do that every week or if that's just for the Masters. So um, if you're a DraftKings guy and you don't have sports books anywhere else, first of all, sign up another sports book. Books, go click links in my articles that are right, please. Um, but if you are just solely on DraftKings for some reason, you actually have ties paid in full uh, market this week, which is nice because it sucks when you bet a guy and he finishes, you know, T19 with four other guys and you get pennies on your dollar that you bet. It sucks. Bet ties paid in full. Take, take the, take the small loss and juice and just bet ties paid in full. Trust me. You're going to lose a lot more with dead heat rules than you are with ties paid in full. The odds adjustment there. I 100% agree. Uh, Buffalo Dan says Ricky stole it from his caddy and loved it. Clark started using it as well. Shortly after that, it was discontinued Odyssey Putterhead, so they used their old supply for limited release in 2023. Oh, very cool. Uh, they came yeah. out one uh, with one for 2024, picked up mine a few weeks. So there you go. Let us know if if, it, if it's helping your game, Buffalo Dan. That's what I was going to say. Let me know because, uh, you know, putting, uh, that's the amateur's worst friend, I guess, when you're talking about golf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> absolutely uh top 10 you're taking a villain to finish in the top 10 i am and literally my first note is i know he's a villain but it's patrick patrick reed plus 450 yeah. and i know he's a villain but i've said it before i like a little bit of narrative when i go into some of these picks especially at majors and patrick reed as a villain seems like the type of guy who would really thrive off being in contention being on top of the leaderboard again as like the disruptor in the game of golf you know going to live golf and all of that but going into the numbers, there is some reason behind this. Uh, based on that li- sketchy live strokes gain data that we have, he's gained on approach in the last two live events, including finishing T9 last week at Doral. 
And then you have his Augusta history. Dude is just knows how to play this golf course. He won in 2018, was T36 the year after. Okay, a little hangover. But then he went T10, T8, solo 35th, and T4 last year. He puts the absolute piss out of these greens at Augusta National Golf Club. And we know how good his short game is. He's a great around the green player. He's a great putter. That's kind of where he thrives. With him playing well on approach in addition to his short game, I really like that. And also, like, you look at the numbers of how well he's putted at Augusta. In his last three, he's gained more than 3.6 strokes on the greens alone. So if he's if he's hitting it closer than he normally does, like trends-wise in terms of his approach numbers, he's going to put the lights out. He's going to have a good finish. And I think plus 450 is just because he's a live guy. Like if it was if he was still playing on the PGA Tour, I don't think I would be getting this number. Yeah, I always like to bet on uh, Patrick Reed in some form uh, at the Masters. I think last year, I think I bet him top 20. Um, I haven't decided how I'm going to do it yet. Um, so, yeah, I, I like that pick. He's And the Masters, it, it is kind of a course where like distance does help you, but short hitters can certainly thrive at the Masters, mm-hmm. and we've seen that a ton of times. It's another reason why I don't mind taking Brian Harmon top 20 at the spot, too. So, uh, yeah. Uh, just going to dig in the chat here. Uh, Paul says thoughts on Matt Fitzpatrick, uh, top 10, including ties plus 280. data golf model loves him strokes gained putting over his last four starts off the chart. Uh, driving numbers improved after removing weight from club. Stay tuned, my <laughs> friends. Stay tuned. Uh, that is a funny story. That we're I forgot. About. He re- I forgot about the weight thing already. That's unbelievable. And his numbers have literally improved since he did that. So, uh, oh, very, absolutely. Very funny. Uh, stay tuned for that though, my friend. Um, but I'm going to talk about my top 10 next. Um, and this is a guy I did bet on him to win outright. I bet I got him at 70 to one. He's now become uh, a lot shorter at a lot of sports books. And you want to talk about data golf, uh, data golf. If you want to pick out one guy who their model, uh, favors a lot more than the betting odds, it's this guy. Um, so I'm betting on him outright 70 to one top 10, Russell Henley plus 450. Russell mm-hmm. Henley makes a lot of sense this week. When I look at his numbers, It reminds me of when I was looking through the open championship last year and I, and Brian Harmon stuck out to me and I was like, wait, this doesn't seem right. Like once I dig into the numbers, there's a lot of things to like um, about Russell Henley this, this week, just like there's a lot of things to like about Brian Harmon at the open last week. Um, Solid history to Gus national. He's finished in the top 15, three times. He finished T four here last year. So that checks that box. Also coming into the event in great form, he finished in the top five in two of his last three starts, a solo fourth place last week, uh, where he gained plus 1.94 true strokes uh, gain on the field with his approach play. So he is striking the ball fantastically. He already has great history at the course. Uh, He's in good form. Um, Top 10 plus 450, and I also bet on him at 70 to 1. I don't think there's a 70 to 1 still out there. I think FanDuel has a 65 to 1, which I think is the best price. Um, but also, uh, like I said, Data Golf uh, loves him. Um, if you look at uh, look at their pre tournament model for the Masters, he is sandwiched in there right after Wyndham Clark and ahead of Dustin Johnson, ahead of Patrick Cantley, ahead of Justin Thomas, ahead of Siwoo Kim, ahead of Shane Lowry. Like Data Golf's model, if you value it at all, it has Russell Henley ranked way higher. Even their true odds, they think his odds should be. Um, well now 69 to one, their odds are generally longer than what they were, but I'm glad I got him at 70 to one. So, uh, Russell Henley, I love Russell Henley. I'm actually, you know, before we came on the show, I'm writing up my, uh, sleeper picks for fansided.com Russell, <coughs> excuse me. Russell Henley's on there. Uh, choked me up a little bit cause I'm so uh, <laughs> invested in it. <laughs> Getting emotional talking to Russell Henley. <laughs> oh my God. You know, Georgia Bulldogs, they really get me, uh, get me in my feelings. Uh, yeah, Buffalo Dan says, yeah, 65 to 1 a FanDuel that down to 55 to 1 a DK. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think FanDuel has the pr- best price on Henley right now at 65 to 1. So, uh, worth a sprinkle. Uh, one mm-hmm. thing we did mention, I think this is what I what I wanted to mention, but forgot. Not this is not an event generally that you want to bet uh, long shots. Uh, over the past, I think, what since 2010, the two long shots out of one were Danny Willett, who was like 66 to 1, and then Charles Schwartzel was 90 to 1. Um, yeah. outside of that, it is generally chalky, but I mean, Russell Henley falls inside that 90 to one number, but, um, I don't think we're going to get a, uh, Brian Harmon 150 to one or, uh, you know, Wyndham Clark last year, who was a hundred to hundred to one went to win the U S open. So yeah, I don't think we're going to get any of those types of long shots. Um, I, at best we're going to, we're going to get a mid range player. So that's why with Russell Henley, even though I did bet on him to win outright, um, top 10 is probably, the, probably the way to play him. 
Yeah, hundred percent. And I mean, you look at both of those long shot winners, and they both featured like pretty big collapses from top players, like yes. Rory in two thousand eleven when uh, Schwartzel won, and then Willett was the year Spieth collapsed. Correct? Yes, correct. Yeah. So like both were like big collapses, and so like to, for a long shot to win, it not only takes one of them playing extremely well, but you also probably need a little help on top of that. Yeah, that's right. Um, all right, top five. Top five. I know this is a popular pick. This is pretty chalky for the week, but I can't. I can't look away. Sahith the Gala man. Sahith is plus six fifty for a top five, and I absolutely love it. I already mentioned he was top ten as a de- uh, in his debut last year, and over the last twenty rounds, twenty third in strokes weighted strokes gained approach, and he's gained. He's trending in the right way with his ball striking. Uh, last week he was seven point three two strokes gained. Uh, or the, sorry, his last tournament seven point two three two strokes gained with ball striking and that's up from five in his previous tournament and then 2.45 the pre- the tournament before that he's also putted extremely well he lost strokes in houston which is probably why he ended up finishing t28 but he gained in six straight on the greens before that the other big thing with sahith or two big things i should say one his big worry is always can he get a little? He can get a little squirrely with the driver. We all know that he's long, but he can get a little squirrely. That's not as penal at Augusta as it is at most places. Like you can't be like off the planet, but Sahith has like a controlled squirreliness, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. And on top of that, that leads to Sahith having a very developed like creativity. He's very almost Jordan Spieth esque with the way he uh, hits some of his creative shots, both on approach and uh, and around the green. That plays so well here, and I think that's why he was able to come in on his first try at Augusta and finish T9. So I think he's going to improve upon that. I sprinkled on him outright as well. I think he's I think he's in that same Russell Henry, Henley range, like 65 to 1, if I'm not mistaken. So I really like him this week. I think a top five play at plus 650 is a steal. Yeah, I, I, I'm owed on Sawhith this week. Really? He's a very popular pick, and I totally understand why. So, like, if, like, I don't have, like, data reasons to, like, kind of be not on Sahith, but I just think, well, number one, I think he's a little bit of a head case. I think he's almost, like, too self-aware and smart to, like, mm-hmm. really win, like, big events. And maybe I'm just, you know, overvaluing the time he blew it at the WM Phoenix Open uh, <laughs> when the one thing he couldn't do on what holes at 17 is put it in the water, and he put it in the yeah. water. Mm-hmm. Um I I know he had a I know he had a good finish last year. I just feel like the expectations surrounding him are a little bit higher this year. And I just I don't know. I don't know. I don't have data to back it up because the numbers all make sense. I'm owed on him though. But are the expectations that high? Because like, yes, in the betting, like in the betting right. community, yes, he's a popular pick. And like I understand why that might skew your thing of expectations. But if like if you're running down master storylines, how far down do you have to go before you get to Oh, yeah, how's right. Sahith going to do in his second Masters? Like, it's not, it's not yeah, in the top right. twenty, top top fifteen, or anything like that. It to me, every single year there's like a like a mid range guy who gets a ton of hype heading to the Masters that just yeah. ends up stinking. And to me, it just and this is more of a gut feeling more than anything data driven. It just screams to me that Sahith's going to be this year's version of that. And I might. Un- be wrong. Unfortunately, I think. Uh, our squad i'm worried our squad ride is that guy yeah i'm also worried our squad ride is that, <laughs> so because everyone on the planet is on him but we'll we'll talk about him in a little bit um yeah you're right that's yeah yeah it could be him uh my top five and uh this is why i told you to uh, hang on paul because uh you got ahead of me here i wanted to talk with this guy as well matt fitzpatrick is gonna be my top five now i'm not betting on him to win which i might regret I even said at the start of the show, usually the top five, top 10, and even sometimes top 20 guys I pick, I bet on to win. I, I'm not doing this with Matt Fitzpatrick. I don't think his game is quite there for 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 to, to win at Augusta, but there's a lot of things to like, um, as you pointed out. Uh, great Masters history. Uh, he has improved in four straight starts at the Masters, T46, 2020, T34, 2021, T14, 2022, then T10, last year and even a t7 all the way back in 2016 as well so he, he has a very good master's history very consistent um and his game is turning in the right direction solo fifth of the players uh he had a great ball striking tournament there t10 last week at valero now his ball striking numbers weren't great at valero which is why i'm probably not betting on him to win uh out right here um but his short game is fantastic uh i'm sure his irons you know have a very good chance of kind of getting back into things so uh, Matt Fitzpatrick um, is a name that I'm certainly watching this week. I'm I'm just going to bet him top five, six to one is how I'm going to play him. So I I agree with you, uh, Paul. You're you know top ten plus two eighty. Obviously a little bit more of a safer pick, but yeah, 
as you mentioned, uh, data golf model loves him. Strokes gained putting over his last four starts off the chart. Agree, agree. Driving numbers have improved because his driver was bad there for a while. Um, and now it's improved ever since he got the weight off the club. So, um, like he gained, yeah, he gained uh, 1.3 true strokes off the tee uh, at the players. And I think that was a tournament where the, the weight on the driver story came out. So, uh, yeah, I like Fitzpatrick, obviously top 10. I'm going to get a little bit more aggressive taking top five. I mean, I like Fitzpatrick too. I mean, you know, he's got a he's got a weight off his driver and a weight off his back, and he's uh he's playing a lot better right now. And I mean, we see, he's also a big game hunter, kind of sneakily. Like he always tends to show up at like a lot of yep. these big events it, when when he has uh, non weighted clubs in his bag. Yep, major winner too. And I did bet on him at the U.S. Open when he won, so I do have a soft spot for Fitzpatrick as well. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, let's get to it. The our picks to win. We're setting ourselves up for heartbreak. You know what's going to happen is our two picks to win are going to be first and second on Sunday, and they're both going to collapse, and then, like, Scotty Scheffler is going to win. Oh, yeah, 100%. All right, so, yeah. so let's let's rip the Band-Aid off. Who are you taking? Glutton for punishment, Rory McIlroy, 11-1. to 1. Yeah. He's going to complete the career Grand Slam, get it done. I mean, I understand. This is a fool's bet. Rory can't win the Masters. Rory has more scar tissue than you could possibly imagine when it comes to the Masters. It's yeah. unbelievable. But, like – Everything just is checking the right boxes for me to come in to believe this. He started working with Butch Harmon and his approach play has started to like spike. And that's always been like the big thing with Rory. We know he's arguably the best player in the game off the tee. We know he can get hot with the putter. It is erratic, but he can get hot with the putter. It's been how dialed is he on approach? Well, over his last two tournaments, he gained 4.17 strokes total at, on approach at the players. And then last week gained 7.5 on approach. Justin Ray had a stat about his proximity numbers. From 50 to 125 yards, he was four feet, four inches better than he had been over the past year. From 125 to 150 yards, five feet, one inch, one inch better. 150 to 175 yards, three feet, nine inches better. From 175 to 200, seven feet, eight inches better, which that's even more impressive because that's probably where he's going to be playing from at Augusta on these approach shots. So everything is lining up there. Butch, or Butch Harmon is working with him. He said today that he's been texting him. He also said in his press conference today that he is going to – like. His big focus for this tournament is to be more disciplined. And I feel like that's what's bitten Rory more than anything at Augusta is being more disciplined. I think he's in the right headspace to do this. He just showed up today, if I'm not correct, if I'm not mistaken. Like he didn't even come up, come in early to try to get over prepared. He was solo third last last week. No one even cared because of Denny and Akshay at the top of the leaderboard. I think it's all shaping up. And then we go back to the narratives. You know, I said Sahis probably not in the top 20. Rory might not be in the top three, which is kind of a big change from where we've seen Rory in terms of Masters. So I think the pressure's off a little bit, and I think this is his time to actually get it done. So I, first of all, I agree. Everything is shaping up. This seems like the time that Rory is going to finally win the Masters. The issue is I have said that to myself <laughs> like the past 10 years straight. So <laughs> like two or three years ago, I finally just settled on, okay, I'm just not going to bet on Rory. And if he wins the Masters, then I'm like actually fine with losing all my bets because that's one of the few players that like I'd be like pumped to see win, even though yeah. I lo would lose money on it. So I made the decision myself that I will no longer be betting Rory to win the Masters because when he does it, perfect. I'll be happy for him. I'll lose my bets, but that's okay. Um, I can't bet on him and then he sucks and i mean maybe misses the cut he's missed the cut here two of the last three years and then i feel mm -hmm. like an idiot so i am glad one of us is betting on rory so then if he does win not only now will i be happy for rory i can be happy for you as well um i'm not going down that path with you though i i'm out <laughs> i'll watch the it. sidelines i get it my ego is too big to have rory mcelroy win the masters and me not be on it also, me, if to, I, be, to be fair 11 to 1 when is the last time we got rory mcelroy 11 to 1 to win the masters Exactly. Like That's always shorter than 10 to one. Yeah. And I, I do think like, I'm pretty sure that number is at FanDuel and I'm pretty sure that he, um, if I'm not mistaken, it may be bed MGM. I'm not sure a hundred percent, but anyway, he was, uh, he was 10 to one across the board when the odds board came out. And so those odds have dropped wherever I got that number. And so like, it is that people are following the same path that you are. It seems like in terms of the betting markets. Yeah, it looks. I'm just checking Caesars now, but at least BetMGM, FanDuel, DraftKings all has them at uh, 11 to one now. So yeah, I think it has dropped oh, a little bit. Nice. Um, I'll I'll look at Caesars here in a bit. Um, but you want to talk about glutton for punishment? 
<laughs> I mean, how how can I stand on my high horse and make fun of you for being a glutton for punishment to bet on Roy McIlroy? Because, ladies and gentlemen, I'm back on my bullshit. <laughs> Xander Shoffley <laughs> to win the Masters. 18 to 1, which is not even actually his odds have even gotten even shorter. He's a very popular play this week, which blows my mind because don't we all haven't we all fallen for this trap a million times before? I don't think he's available at 18 to 1 anymore. I think he's down to like 14 to 1 everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, I got him at 18 to 1. I think even last week, I think he was like 20 to 1 or like 22 to 1. So I thought I got a bad price on him, but even now, I mean, four, he's 14 to 1, I think, everywhere. Um, I don't know. I, it, it's my curse. It's a burden. It's my cross to bear is I have to bet on Xander Shoffley every single year at the Masters as long as he's going to be playing in it. It's just something I'm cursed with. Now, mm -hmm. I think I've gone to the point I'm willing to not bet on Xander at any other event. I think I've matured enough to get to that point, and I will not bet on him at the U.S. Open. I won't bet on him at the PGA Championship. I won't bet him on, on at the Open, but it's something about the Masters Long ago, five years ago, I had a vision Xander Shoffley putting on the green jacket. I bet on him that year in 2019. It was the year Tiger won. I think Xander finished T2. And mm -hmm. I literally had a vision of him putting on the green jacket. So I committed that I will be betting on Xander Shoffley every year at the Masters. And I'm doing it again, baby. Um, to be fair, his stats. Now, obviously, he's going to melt at some point. He's going to melt. He's going to put it on the water in some hole, and he's not going to win. But if you look at the data, he has the best chance to win it now of any other year. Mm -hmm. Total strokes gained on the PGA Tour, it is Scotty Scheffler, number one, Xander Shoffley, number two. He's finished inside the top five in three of his last four starts. Uh, he follows that rule that I talked about earlier, the Masters betting trend, which has predicted 12 of the last 12 winners. Uh, he He's on that list for his strokes gained T to green. He has historically done very well at Augusta. Finishes of T2 in 2019, as I talked about, T3 in 2021, T10 last year. What was he? 2021 was the Hideki year, and he looked like mm -hmm. he might catch Hideki at the end, and then he put it in the water on 16, which, to be yep. fair, I still think was actually a very good tee shot. I think there was a gust of wind when, when the ball was in the air. Uh, and if that was, like, two feet further, that was, like, next to the hole. Yep. Um, and, and he birdies that. Like, he would have had a very realistic chance of beating Hideki and winning that year. So he's had a good history great recent form some of the best form he's ever been in um i gotta do it i gotta bet on xander once again once he, he was not gonna win he's not gonna win he might be in contention he's gonna blow it and i'm gonna feel like an idiot again but i gotta do it you gotta do it and if it makes you feel any better it is not a pick to win but i do have xander shoffley in my plays on fansided.com for the week i have i have it i love this him and Scotty Scheffler on FanDuel, if you parlayed them both for a top 10, plus 260. I like that number a little bit for those two. Because I think, I mean, like you said, in strokes gains, like total strokes gain, two best players in the world right now. So you're, I get to bet on the uh, plus odds for both of them to finish in the top 10 in an 89-person field. Give yep. me that. Yep, absolutely. Uh Al Newsweek wants to get DFS picks. I think generally the guys we're talking about are guys we're going to put in our DFS lineups. And this next portion here, when we talk about uh, close to the win picks, those are long shots. So cheap guys that will have on DFS. And Cody, I think you write a DFS article as well, right? Yep, that'll be coming out later this afternoon as well. Yeah, so keep an eye out for that. But yeah, so I mean, let's get right into it because um, then we'll finish with a squad right at the end. But let's talk closest to the win. Uh, if you're a new viewer, close to the win, we pick uh, golfers that are at least 100 to 1 odds or longer to win. And we do a competition between Cody and I, whoever, uh, who's ever golfer finishes further up the leaderboard or closest to the win, gets a point that week. Um, and a loser has to pay for a round of golf for the winner at the end of the season. I am up 5-3 heading into this week. Uh, so if you're talking DFS, uh, these would be great cheap options. And to be honest, we've both actually done extremely well uh, with these picks. These guys haven't won, but they're like consistently when we pick them, like one of us picks a guy who finishes like top 20, top 30 um, for pretty cheap guys on DFS. So why don't you start us off? Um, I would not recommend putting this guy in DFS. I was shocked when you sent me your close to the win pick this week. But um, hey, I guess it's one way to bet on this guy. Uh, to be clear, I am not going to have my uh, closest to the win pick in any DFS lineup. This is a principal pick. Uh, Tiger right. Woods is 150 to one to this this week, and so yeah. he has to be my closest to the That's win fair. pick. I mean, look, a lot of the times, and the Masters is different. Like it's top, like more than half the field is going to make this cut. It's top 50 and ties in an 89 person field. So just making the cut probably isn't good enough. But I know Tiger's going to make the cut. 
He's done it 23 straight times. Right. I'm pretty sure that he can play this course in his sleep and play it well. All the reports around the golf course are that he's striping the ball. And as long as he can stay healthy and feel good, he's going to have success at Augusta. Not the success he's had, obviously. He's not the same player. He's almost 50 years old. He has he's basically RoboCop at this point. Like he's not a, like he, he's surgically repaired all over, but 150 to one is just a little disrespectful to arguably the greatest masters player who's ever lived. Yeah, I get it for, for this competition. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, even last year when he had, what, what was it? Plantar uh, fasciitis that made him end up with her also. That, I mean, that's probably the, the worst version of tiger we've seen. And he even, even then he made the cut, he made the cut on the line and he didn't even tee it up on Saturday. Cause, cause he withdrew before Saturday's round, but, he yeah. played well enough Thursday to Friday, completely hobbled uh, to make the cut. So, yeah, I mean, if there's one course where experience, you know, can outweigh skill a little bit, um, it's Augusta. I mean, Phil Mickelson finished second place last year, something <laughs> yeah. we, we kind of forget, um, which was almost actually, in my opinion, kind of more impressive than his win at PGA, or maybe not more, but almost as, a, as impressive as his win at, at the PGA Championship in 2021 uh, was him finishing second place last year. So, that just goes to in, show you. I mean, he was in dog crap form on yeah. live coming into last year, and then all of a sudden just charges up the leaderboard on Sunday. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, yeah. Tiger will will make the cut. Um, is he going to beat my close to the wind pick? I don't know. Would I put him in D, in a DFS lineup? No. Uh, but I like this because now this gives you a, a reason to cheer for Tiger Woods because I don't think either. I might bet on Tiger to make the cut because actually it's like close to like a coin flip in terms of odds mm -hmm. for him to make the cut. Um, I also like Phil to make the cut, which you can bet at plus money. Um, Phil, even though, you know, the past handful of years has not ever been in good form heading to the masters has made the cut almost every single year. So, uh, I think last time he missed the cut at the masters, like 2016, I think, uh, yeah, so plus money right. for Phil too. Uh, for tiger, it was 1996 in case you were curious yeah. as an amateur, he missed it. So. Yeah. I don't think he, I don't, I think that was his first year as a pro at the masters. I think he made the cut the year before as an, no, am I wrong? Oh no, you're 100 percent right. I apologize. You're absolutely right. I think he made the 19, cut as he an won amateur. in '97, and he was yeah, yeah. You're and right. And then his first year as a pro, he missed the cut, and then he won in '97. I, I I believe. Um, I think you're right. Yeah, unless he was in the Masters twice as an amateur. Well, he did win the USAM three times, so it's entirely that's, possible. It's okay, possible then. Uh, let's see. Wikipedia, save me. Uh yeah, '97 was his first as a pro. Okay, so. so there you go. Um, my close to the win player or a pick is a guy who I'd recommend for a DFS lineup. And this is a guy, well, Cody, you would not recommend for a DFS lineup because you already trashed him. Uh, my close to the win pick is Harris English. Um, 125 to one cheap DFS option. Yes, missed the cut last week. Did not have a good performance last week. He lost uh, over a stroke uh, with his approach play. But before that, I mean, solo seventh at the Genesis, which is obviously, you know, one of the signature events. T21 at the Arnold Palmer, T19 at the Players. Those are three big dog events, and he finished T21 or better with a seventh. And T17 at the WM Phoenix Open. So outside of last week, yeah, his ball striking numbers may not be, you know, peak Harris English, um, but he's finding ways to get, you know, close to the top of the leaderboard. So um, and a decent history at the Masters, um, uh, T43 last year, T21, tweet, uh, I guess T43 is not great, uh, but T21 uh, in 2021, a little bit of a tongue twister. Um, yeah, so I'll go Harris English. If you're looking for a guy 100 to 1 odds or longer, I'll take Harris English. I mean, I think that might be the first time peak Harris English has ever been used in a sentence, <laughs> but uh, I do appreciate it. And to be clear, I'm not. I wasn't trying to trash Harris English. No, I just think a top twenty, a top twenty is a little <laughs> aggressive for my taste. That's all I'm saying. Uh, yeah, I'm probably not gonna. Let's see. What are his top thirty odds? I might go top thirty for Harris English. I think top twenty. I agree, might be a little aggressive. Um, but let me see if I can find um some top thirty odds because most most books now do have top thirty market uh mm. for this for this event uh, as well as top forty if you want to get. Actually, Bet MGM is top 40. They don't have top 30. So let me just see. Top 40, which is basically make the cut and then don't crap your pants on the weekend. <laughs> um, I'm going to have to search this because I missed it. Minus 135. Uh, I probably look for... plus 150 for a top 30. So is that including ties? Pro uh, no, probably not. Yeah. 
So regardless, I, I, I'll have to shop around, but I think that's how I'll probably bet Harris English is top 30. I'm going to make a DFS lineup. I'll definitely be putting him in my DFS lineup. He'll probably, I don't know what his price is in front of me, but he'll, he'll be a cheap option for DFS as well. Also, if you want to parlay Tiger and Phil to both make the cut, plus 323 on FanDuel. Done. Done. I'll be placing that that. immediately after. Yeah, we're going to, you know, we're about to talk about a couple prop bets, but I I just put that together because you you mentioned it, and I was like, I wonder what those odds are, especially with Phil being at slightly plus money. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We do have a couple prop bets, but first, let's just talk our squad ride. Uh, Brian Mm -hmm. Jeffer, like I said, was supposed to come on. He had uh, something pop up the last second, so he couldn't. Uh, His pick to win is a guy who both... If he didn't pick him, uh, Cody was going to pick him, and I was going to pick him. So all three of us love him. The rest of golf betting world <laughs> loves this guy. Um, he's the most bet on guy, I think, this week. He might be. Um, so we'll just make it a squad ride and hope for the best. Now, this is obviously setting up for disaster, because not only is everyone betting on him, he checks the box of literally every single possible trend you can look up, points to this guy. It's Hideki Matsuyama. He's our squad ride. Um, I got him, I got him last, I wrote an article on BetSider last week saying, if you want to bet on Hideki Matsuyama with the Masters, do it now, because he was 28 to 1. So I bet mm-hmm. on him last week, and now, he, I mean, bet MGM, he's 18 to 1. Uh, DraftKings, he's 20 to 1, so you still have a 20 to 1 out there. I don't know if there's a 22 to 1 out there somewhere. Uh, FanDuel, 20 to 1, but I bet him 28 to 1 last week. So I, so I got some value on him, uh, but Cody, you can talk about him. Why, why is he the most obvious pick in the world this week? I mean, obviously, past winner and the success at Augusta comes into play. This is the stickiest course history that we're going to see in the golfing world. Like you said, you said it. We play it every year for a major championship. He, but all the numbers just check out. Like he's just checks every box. He's top twenty-five strokes gained off the tee, ninth on approach, first around the green uh, over the last twenty rounds. Like, and he's putting. He's gaining with the putter. Everything is just checking for Hideki playing some of the best golf in the world right now. Like that's just where it is. And it's a, it's his brand of golf. There's a reason he won the masters playing his brand of golf because when he's on, it perfectly suits what you're trying to do at Augusta. I mentioned earlier, like, yeah, he's not putting particular, like he's not putting great, but he's gaining. And when he's gaining, that means he's lag putting well. And when he lag puts well, he's not putting big numbers into play. So I absolutely love this. Yeah, and he quietly might be playing the best golf of his career. I, he's actually heading into this tournament, I think, in better form than w- when he won the tournament. Uh, leads mm-hmm. the tour in strokes gained um, around the green, which is huge at Augusta. Um, yeah. You don't necessarily have to be the greatest putter in the world, which actually a lot of winners of this event have not been great, good putters at all. Um, but if you can scramble, um, and if you rank high in strokes gained around the green, uh, you're going to do well. I found a tweet earlier about all the things where Hideki Matsuyama lines up for this week. Now, of course, I can't find it. Should have had it bookmarked. Um, I was about to say, do you ever uh, forget whether you bookmark or like, bookmarked or liked a tweet and yes. forget which one when you're searching? Because I do that all the time. Yes. Um, but yeah, recent form, T22 won the Genesis Invitational, T12 at API, T6 players, and T7 at the Valero. I thought he would have won the Valero, except he crapped his pants in the first round, had a bad first round, and then charged all the way back up to T7. It looked like he was going to miss the cut at one point uh, on Friday. So... Um, yeah, Hideki Matsuyama, everyone in the world's on him. You guys don't need to hear us talk about it anymore because you've probably already bet on him too. Um, he just checks <laughs> literally every single box he checks. Yep. Which means it's, he's uh, going to miss the cut. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. He honestly, it's Hideki. He's probably WD in on Thursday. Yes. Um, Max Homa. Uh, no, I, I, I mode on Max Homa. Not only does he, has he not really ever played well in a major? Um, he also is in bad form. T25 mm-hmm. last week, I mean, not bad, but T64 before that, his ball striking numbers aren't where they need to be. Um, in his history at the Masters, is miscut, miscut, T48, T43. I am out on Max Homa. Yeah, I am as well. I I I really wanted to be in on Max Homa, but I needed better form to do that because he did register his first top 10 in a major at the end of last year. So I was hopeful that maybe – you know, I mean, I think we both like Max Holman. I think when Max Holman's at his best, he's actually one of the top 15 best players in the world. And the next step is competing in majors. But his form has just regressed quite a bit to start 2024. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Harrison, for reminding me the Scotty rollover. Um, it took me a second. I was like, a Scotty roll? What? Um, Scotty <laughs> rollover. Um, yeah, I, I'm i just sticking to the same thing. I know he's like minus 250 if he ties included the finish in the uh, top 10. Um, so it was at 140. 
$41. I put that in a minus 250. Ties included top 10. If he does that, it'll, the rollover will be up to, I think, $198, which I thought at this point, this is like the seventh event I've done it. I thought it'd be up a lot more, but I guess uh, when the golfers are minus 250, it doesn't work as well uh, as it would have last year when he was like two to one to finish top 10. Um, he said he's going to do it by doing a first round top 10 dead heat rules plus 150. Yeah, uh, he is with ties for first round top 10 at minus 125. Yeah, there, there, there's other ways you can do it if you want better value for your rollover. But I know the first time I do that, he's not going to finish top 10 and I'm going to be pissed. So I'm just sticking to just ties included, full tournament top 10. And maybe by 2026, I'll, I'll win a significant amount of money. But yeah, the strategy is not working as I intended. <laughs> This isn't as fun of a journey as you were hoping for. <laughs> no. Uh, Lowry first round top 10 dead. He is 10 to one. Um, what? Top 10? Uh, Lowry's my first round leader bet. Um, I don't Ooh. know if you have one, but he's my first round leader bet. I think a lot of things line up well for Lowry this week. Um, he's second also on PJ Tour behind Cantlay in first round scoring average of the season. Um, and he has a pretty solid history at the Masters. Good, better than I think people think at the Masters. So, um, if he's 10 to one dead heat for top 10 first round, uh, yeah, I would, I'd, I would bet on that as well. Yeah. I, uh, Rory's my first round leader bet just because I oh, double uh, dipping. Perfect. Uh, emotional hedge. Cause I see a world where he just jumps out to the top of the leaderboard on Thursday and I'm getting real hyped that the green jackets coming to Northern Ireland Yeah, and then he just collapses over the next three days. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, let's wrap up with a couple props. I have two that I want to talk about. You have one, I believe. So, so mm -hmm. I'll go first. You go second. I'll go third. You can sandwich in, in between my two. Um, I'm going to top debutante. I got a long shot. There are the obvious guys. There's Ludwig. Uh, there's Akshay. There's Wyndham Clark. But I'm going to go with a guy who I briefly mentioned him earlier on the show. Um, I'm going to go Austin Eckro at 18 mm. to 1 to finish as a top debutante. Uh, won the Cognizant Classic in early March. Uh, since then, he hasn't been great, but it's been a short game that's let him down. He's still, his ball striking numbers are fantastic. Um, and like I said earlier, that trend, that's 12 for 12, the last 12 ma uh, Masters, Austin Ekro falls in that trend um, in terms of golfers um, who has who have gained at least 18 total strokes tee to green in their last four events leading into the Masters. So um, he's 250 to one to win. Maybe I actually should have taken Austin Ekro as my close to the win. Damn, I wish I kind of did. Um there's another good cheap DFS option, though, if you want to go DFS. But I'm going to sprinkle mm -hmm. a little uh, on him to 18 to 1 to finish as a top debutant. I like that. That's that's good value there. All right. You got, uh, you're going to Scandinavia for your prop bet. Yep. Uh, it's uh, listed on FanDuel as top Nordic. Uh, Victor Hovland. And I understand that Victor Hovland has kind of not been Victor Hovland to start 2024, but there are four Nordic players in this field. The other three are Ludwig Aberg. Thor Bjorn Olsen and Nikolai Ho Hoygaard. And all three of those. Like, I are, do like Nikolai Hoygaard. I do, but he also. Not it, this week, though. Yeah, I was about to say, this is not the course for him. And his form yeah. has kind of dipped since the early 2024. And the thing with Victor Hovland is his ball striking has started to improve a little bit. The around the green play is still very worrisome. And that's why I don't have him as any placement bet. But when you're talking about him who. I believe this is his fourth Masters. He was in the top 10 last year. Like he has experience and he obviously knows how to play this pretty well. The other thing is like the around the green play at Augusta is different than a lot of other courses where you're not talking about like thick rough, which is where Victor Hovland actually tends to struggle is when he's hitting out a thick rough. It's mowed down and he when he can play with the putter a little bit off of the green, we saw at the Open Championship at St. Andrews. That's where he can kind of thrive. So I think Augusta is a really good course fit for him and he obviously has the experience advantage on all these guys. So getting plus odds on him when he's he's not even the favorite in this group, Ludwig is. And so I think that's I think that's just a misprice based on what we know about Augusta. I do agree. Actually, like I wouldn't bet Victor any other way this week, but I actually do like that bet because I do think he should be favored. I, I I do think Ludwig's overvalued in the betting market. I've talked about it before, mm -hmm. um, especially this week where he is a debutant. And once again, that's not the be all end all at the Masters. We've seen some debutants perform well, but I think Victor with his experience at this course should be the favorite in that group. So yeah, since he's not, um, I'm probably not going to bet it myself, but if I were to bet on Victor, that's how I do it. I, I do like that play. Yeah, I, I had looked at other ways, you know, thinking top 10 maybe, but that's just, with his form, that's too aggressive for me. Yep. Uh, my other prop bet I want to talk about, which is actually 
my one of my favorite things to bet on uh at the masters every single year is top amateur um i don't know why i just find the amateur race at the Masters. i don't care about it at the other majors but at the masters for some reason i just find it super interesting um so i've done a deep dive into the amateurs um i'm betting on the favorite i think he's plus 165 on chris joe lamprecht um mm -hmm. who is the number one ranked amateur golfer in the world some of the other guys I'm very low on. Stuart Hagstead, who's back again after winning another mid-am. He's like the greatest mid-am player of all time. Isn't he um, like 35 at this point? <laughs> yeah, I think he's 33. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. mid-30s. Um, I mean, good for him, but he's never really done well at the Masters. The other guy who I'd consider betting on who's second on the odds list is Santiago de la Fuente, the uh, Latin uh, uh, amateur winner. He's an in interesting pick as well, and I believe he's the one who played at the Mexico Open. Uh, if I'm correct as well. Uh, one of these guys, yeah. played, was it him? Actually, I think it might have been Christo, if I'm not mistaken. Damn, I should have had that, and I, for some reason, can't find my notes about the amateurs. Um, I don't... Maybe, was it Christo? Because those Cause, are the two guys that I liked when I did my research, but Christo is the number one ranked amateur golfer in the world. He finished as a low-am last year at the Open Championship. Um mm -hmm. I th I priced him when I because I kind of handicapped the amateurs on Sunday night. I priced him at uh, like plus one fifteen. He's like plus one sixty five. So I think there's a little bit of value there uh, on Christo this week. Hmm. I, I like I that. Uh, yeah, I would stay f uh, away from Stuart Hagstead. I'd stay away from Neil Shipley, who I don't think has much of a chance this week. Um, if you want to go with one of the long shots, I think Jasper Stubbs, Stubbs is the way to go. Um, but I think, you know, it is chalky, but I would take one of the top two guys. Yeah, I think Christo is definitely the right play there because he's he's just been kind of crushing it a little bit on, uh, you know, in the college game recently. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out which guy played at the Mexico Open. It, oh, God. Mexico Open. I mean, it really doesn't matter. But one of these guys, one of these guys, and he was like T seven hitting in the weekend, and then he collapsed uh, on the weekend. Yeah, I think it was Santiago. He was, was in the so field. I was, yeah, it was. Yes, I, I did. I just, and that makes sense because I, I believe he's Mexican. he's the Latin American uh, amateur champion. Yeah, and I I believe he's Mexican, which makes sense why he'd be in the Mex Mexico Open, or at the at the very least, he, he's Latin American. Um, yeah, so I was, I, I was correct at the, at the start when I said he was a guy who, uh, made the cut of the Mexico open was like T seven heading in the weekend. He was in a really good spot. He collapsed. He ended up finishing 40 something, uh, by the end of it. So yeah, I like Christo, but I, if you want someone with a little bit longer odds, uh, Santiago de la Fuente is definitely the way to go. I don't think the bottom three guys are really uh, worth a sprinkle at all here as, as low end. No, I, I, that's like basically just a crap shoot. That's like going to the casino and putting your money in a, uh. A slot machine, basically. At I that did point. correct. I did correctly hit the guy last last year, and he was like five. Was Sam Sam Bennett when wasn't he yeah. like good, like heading in the weekend? And he was like three to one or four to one, and I and I did bet on him. So I'm hopefully I can do it two years in a row. You're an amateur sharp, is what you're trying to tell. I us. am because last year the big time favorite was the who's who's that highly touted prospect? He's like number one in like the university ranking. Oh, Gordon Sargent. Gordon Sargent, he was like the minus money favorite to be low am, and I faded him, and I took Sam Bennett, and it worked out for me. So I was very proud of myself. I yeah, yeah. I'm a I'm a I'm an amateur golfer sharp, amateur um, golf in a LPGA. Ian McMillan, yeah. everybody. <laughs> Although LPGA, nothing matters because Nelly just wins every single week, and it's pissing me off. Um, <laughs> my pick last week, say Young Kim made it to the semifinals in match play, but even if she won that, she probably would have lost Nelly in the finals. Nelly's just unbelievable i'm just gonna have to start yeah. betting on nelly i actually heard an interesting comparison for nelly the other day in the men's game justin thomas and you think about justin really? thomas and what what nelly struggled with when she was wasn't winning as much as people thought she could was her putting and but she's a yeah. creative shot maker she has a like obviously like more power than you would realize a beautiful golf swing and justin thomas kind of has all that like he's a shot maker but his short game just kind of really crushes him a little bit and obviously over the past year he's been a little lost in the sauce a little bit when i think the split with bones might actually be good for him with that but i do wonder if splitting from bones kind of unlocks a little bit of something in justin thomas to trust his game and so i think like 
I have my eye on Justin Thomas to not necessarily win four times in a row like Nelly has, but to go on a little bit of a run post caddy split. Yeah. Um, Justin Thomas, I think less than that. I think he needs to get a different coach and not keep getting coached by his dad. I think that's kind of the issue. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. got to change it up at some point, right? Um, obviously, that's a, that's a tough thing to do, but uh, that's what I would recommend uh, for Justin Thomas. But I mean, what do I know? I'm like a 20 <laughs> handicap. What am I talking about? <laughs> um, all right, that's our show. We've, we went extra long. We went an entire hour, so we got to wrap it up. Any final thoughts for the Masters, Cody? I can't wait, man. Like I, I'm on mountain time. So master starts at 6 a.m. my time and I'll be up and ready. Coffee in my hand, ready to go. It, everything's coffee golf when you live on, on the West Coast. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I can't wait. The the music, the song, the atmosphere. Um, it's the best. It is absolutely the best. Uh, my last thing is to join my uh, major season five and done. Uh, check out my the my tweet. I tweeted out the link to that $25 buy-in. Choose five golfers each, each major. Join that pool before tee off on Thursday. Other than that, subscribe to the BetSide at YouTube channel. Like this video. Best of luck with all your picks. Gambler bless. Let's go Hideki. Squad ride Hideki Matsuyama. That's right. All right. See you later. Good luck. <laughs> later.